Hey there, brother. This is Steve Horseman with Good Guys to Great Men. How are you? The topic I'm going to cover today can go long and deep and wide. And as you know, I like to do shorter videos for you to keep things short and to the point. The title of this video is How to Handle a Chronically Controlling and Critical Wife. Now, if you don't have a chronically critical and controlling wife, then you may not want to watch this video. But I bet that you have people in your life who are that way around you or towards you. And I'll bet from time to time you've had the opportunity to be chronically critical or controlling yourself. So in this video, I want to give you just a little bit of insight to help you understand what's going on and how to change your energy around this. Again, this is a thinking problem. At Good Guys to Great Men, we're always talking about the thoughts that create the story, that create your feelings around what's happening. So when it comes to the chronically controlling and critical wife, what's going on sometimes, I'm going to talk about the first thing that can be going on, is that she might have a valid point. Let's get this one out of the way real quick. If you have a chronically controlling and critical wife, and she's always nagging you and criticizing you or picking at you, every now and then, or maybe more than every now and then, she has a fair point. She has a valid point. At which time you have to own the fact that if you're being dismissive, you're being disengaged, you're not present, you're not following through, you're being lazy, you're just not involved the way you know you want to be, she has a valid point. So I, I'll get through this real quick. If this is the problem, this one's fixable because she's not making you that way. You're making you that way. So you have to own that and fix that. And you will watch miracles occur when you take more ownership over your energy and how present you are, how engaged and responsive you are in the relationship. That will change a lot of stuff. One thing it will not change is the second thing I'm going to talk about. If you have an insecure wife who is chronically controlling and critical over every little thing about the way you drive, the way you park, the way you father kids, the way you cook or make lunches, the way you load the dishwasher, right? This is a really common thing in marriages where one partner, and in this case I'm talking about the wife, who has a chronic controlling and critical uh, habit of getting involved in everything and she's in your face a lot. This makes you feel attacked. It makes you feel like you can't get your breath. You're on your heels. You feel like you need to defend yourself or explain yourself and nothing goes right. Every time you try to address it, things just get worse. The problem is you're not thinking about what's really happening. When anybody, men or women, feel like they have a need to chronically control or criticize or complain or judge other people, it's not coming from a fact that you are a mess, that you are the one who caused it. People who chronically need to control and criticize others are suffering from a deep sense of insecurity. That insecurity feels like emotional tension. It feels like fear. It feels like a lack of emotional safety. It's emotional dysregulation. And whenever an insecure human being feels that way, what they will do is project that inner shame, that inner upset, that inner emotional turmoil onto other people. Now, to make this clear, think about when you've been cut off in traffic. Think about on one day where you're tired, you didn't sleep much, you're a little agitated, you're late for work, and then somebody just races by you, slams on their brakes, cuts you off in traffic, and all of a sudden you're having this almost juvenile, adolescent response in your body. It feels tense and angry and scared and judgmental, and you just want to throttle them. And you may flip them the bird, you may scream out loud. And that is an example of when we get so emotionally dysregulated and insecure, we start lashing out at people we don't even know. People who aren't really the cause of our upset, they're just doing what they do. A secure person, if you remember when you're in traffic, when you're feeling secure, you don't react that way. You may even wave the dude in and say, whatever. You're having an un unusually secure, calm, confident day to where external things like that don't bother you. You would like to have a wife like that who on a daily basis has an incredibly calm sense of self-respect and worthiness and she feels just lighted up inside and she feels kind and flowing and there's nothing that rattles, rattles her. There's nothing you can do that would rattle her. She's just very accepting. Now, in the first case, if you're actually doing stuff to piss her off, that's not going to happen. But if you're wishing for an insecure person to be like that, you're barking up the wrong tree. You can't expect her to change overnight. 
if you have been responding to her in insecure ways, that is counterattacking, defending yourself, explaining yourself, shutting down and just disappearing or disconnecting from her. So what we're trying to do is help you understand the importance of you coming to this incredibly calm, confident, insightful and compassionate perspective when you feel like you're being attacked. If you are in the room with someone, let's say it's your wife who's being chronically controlling and critical, I want you to see behind the curtain of what's going on. The fear, the way her mom treated her, maybe the way she slept, maybe the way her whole work life is going, maybe something that happened that day with the kids and she's just acting out like an adolescent would. If you can see that from a secure masculine frame and not feel like you're being attacked and you need to counter attack and make things worse, you can respond better. Sometimes you just say, hey, you should put those knives down in the dishwasher because if they're pointed up, somebody could fall on them. And maybe you like the points up with the knives in the dishwasher. Stupid arguments about stupid crap are the first order of uh, business here. When, whenever she's giving you little comments or criticisms about things like that, all you gotta do is say thanks and mean it. Not thanks sarcastically, thanks, good point put the knife point down or whatever. If you really disagree and want to make an argument over how toilet paper gets loaded, you know, that's going to be a dicey territory. Just say thanks or say thanks and still disagree with her. But you don't need to highlight the fact that what you think she's doing is unreasonable or mean, right? That's an easy one. These are stupid arguments about stupid things. Sometimes things get incredibly personal toxic, mean, unkind, maybe they're jabs at your nature or at your family, you'll have to stand up. If you're not a secure, confident, grounded, happy man, you're not going to be able to respond to personal attacks, things that are truly toxic, truly mean and destructive to the relationship and to the marriage. A confident, kind, calm, happy man will respond to those things with firmness, without anger, without threat and getting big or trying to be physical. He's just very clear and firm. And he says, hey, you're being really disrespectful and mean and unkind right now. This sucks. I'm not going to do this. I won't talk with you while we're doing this with each other. Let's take a break. You have to mean it. You have to, you, you can't set a boundary that you don't mean. A lot of guys who are feeling insecure, they go, hey, wait, I don't want to do this. And they'll walk away. You have to make a declaration. When, when chronic controlling behavior and critical behavior comes out and you know it's coming from her insecurity and that it's not really about you, it's about something going on inside her, the compassionate response is a calm, confident request to settle down and take this to another place. I'm not telling you, I don't, I'm not telling you to tell her to settle down. You know that won't work. But you have to settle yourself down. You have to ask her for a more productive conversation. Tell her you want a kind two-way conversation. If she insists on going on and on and on, like sometimes it happens, like a two-hour dissertation, set a time limit. My personal time limit, time limit would be 15 minutes. If it's truly just a mean, unkind, disrespectful marathon dissertation about everything she's disappointed in in you or everything you've done wrong, nobody needs to put up with that. Put a time limit on it. Now this is important. The advice I'm giving you and how to handle this situation is not to fix her. You might be thinking, oh, that won't work or that won't go over well. She's never going to accept this. I'm not telling you how to make her accept anything. She doesn't have to accept the consequences that you create when things aren't going the way you want them. To, to go. If you want to say, I'm going to stop talking now, she will get mad. If you're going to say, I want to talk to you in a kind, respectful tone, she will get mad. If you say, I'm not going to sit here for more than 15 minutes if all you're going to do is criticize me and dress me down. She won't like that. I'm not telling you what to do to get her to like you. That's what got you here in, to start with. You're trying to please her and trying to be the right guy to make her love you and have sex with you. This is the nice guy syndrome in action. So the confident, calm, happy, secure secure man syndrome is one where you ask for what you want, you describe what it is you desire, you find the things that are going right in the relationship in the relationship instead of finding what's wrong. You ask her to see what's right in the relationship instead of pointing out what's wrong. And more than anything, you can see behind the curtain into her insecurity and see that some of the upset and the tension and her lack of certainty and safety in her own mind and body isn't something you created, but it is there. And if you do love her, as most guys tell me, hey, dude, I love her. 
if you do love her, compassion has to be the leading emotion from you. Not sarcastic, not putting up with it, not tolerating it, but loving her through the upset, which sometimes means pissing her off by shutting down the conversation. A secure, happy, calm, confident man learns how to do that and he feels really good about himself. That's what we do in Good Guys to Great Men. We get you there in everywhere in your life. Fathering, at work, in your company, at home, in your marriage, in the bedroom. You have to find this place to where you, you don't feel attacked and you don't feel this sense of, of upset whenever somebody else is getting upset at you. I want to help you with that. And if you want to get more involved, go to goodguystogreatmen.com. Look at everything we have to offer. I would love to see you in the community, brother. Thanks for being here. Take care. Bye-bye.